In this video you are going to learn how to create this kind of web of spheres using 3GS and Canon GS. Before we get started though, if you don't have a minimum understanding of the basics of these libraries, make sure to watch both of these tutorials before you continue with this one. I'll leave you the links to them in the description below. So as you see we have this empty scene that includes a physics vault already. Now the first thing we are going to do is create a set of constants, the first being the distance between the spheres, the second is the mass of each sphere, and columns and rows represent the number of particles that we want in each column and row. We also need to create the geometry and the material that we are going to use to make the meshes. In addition to that we'll create a couple of arrays to link the meshes with their bodies. I have also explained this part in this video so make sure to check it out. Next we'll create another couple of constants which are the shape of the physics bodies and an object in which we'll put the bodies of the spheres. Now to fill that object with bodies we'll use a double for loops, one that iterates over the columns and the nested one will iterate over the rows. And here we'll create a body instance, put the mass in the shape and also position the body in the scene using a little bit of math. Next we are going to append the body to the particles object with this line which may sound a bit confusing if you are not familiar with this syntax to add properties to an object. Well we refer to this as a computed property name and I did that here because it makes it possible to add a property that includes a space in its key which is not possible if you use the dot notation. This way we will have the particles saved in our objects in this format and by the way I have made a tutorial about objects and computed property names if you want to learn more about the subject. Next we'll do the classic stuff, I mean the creation of a mesh and adding the body in the mesh to the body's array and mesh's array respectively to link each particle body with a mesh. And now as you can see we got a grid of spheres but they are too much separated from each other so we'll multiply the x and z values by the dist constant to reduce the big gap between the particles. Now the final part of this section is the creation of the sphere on top of which we want the web to fall, basic stuff, no explanation needed here. And now that we've finished it with the preparations, all we need to do to turn that grid into a web is a bit of magic that I'll explain to you in the next section. The idea is simple, we are going to use a couple of for loops to create a sort of an invisible connection between every particle and the particle that comes after it at the same row and also at the same column. That being said, to create a connection we'll need to create an instance of the distance constraint class which constructor method takes four arguments with the fourth being optional. The first two arguments represent the couple of particles to attach to each other. The third one represents the distance that should be maintained between each pair of particles, it's the length of these lines in the graph. Now let's get back to the code and create the four loops and here we'll create a function inside of which we'll instantiate the distance constraint, it's just better to organize the code.
The first two parameters represent the indices of the first particle and the second pair represents the indices of the next particle. And now we have a problem which is that the for loop ends at 14 so if we do i plus 1 here we are going to try to connect the 15th particle when i is equal to 14 with the 16th particle. So what we are going to do to fix that is to simply add an if condition to prevent the connect call from happening once we reach the before last particle. So i plus 1 will have the last particle to connect if that makes sense. And then of course we'll do the same thing with the rows. Finally let's create our function. As I said earlier i1 and g1 represent the first particle and i2 and g2 represent the next one. We'll create an instance of the distance constraint and pass the parameters to the constructor. And then we'll add the constraint to the vault and that's it. And there we go. Make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.